The story Bliss is about one single day in the life of Bertha Young. Hello and welcome back to Nibble Pop. As requested by Onkun and Shrabunti, I have decided to give you a summary of the short story Bliss by Catherine Mansfield and in future lectures we will talk in detail about characterization and finer aspects of the story. Today we are going to simply look at the story and try to understand what happens in the story through a detailed summary. Stay with me till the end of this video and please subscribe to my channel to show your support. The story Bliss is about one single day in the life of Bertha Young. Bertha is a 30 year old woman. She is a wife and a mother. As the story begins, we see that Bertha is feeling extremely blissful and she cannot contain her happiness in her heart. She feels as if she has swallowed the sun and feels glowing from within. We find her walking on the pavement and feeling like a little child. She comes back home and then her maid brings her the fruits which she arranges and in her arrangement we find that she shows beautiful sense of artistic perfection in terms of color and design. She matches the fruits with the carpet and then she goes on to see her daughter. Now just as in a conventional household, her daughter was under the care of the nan. Now this nanny, she wasn't very happy to see Bertha because she felt that she kind of intruded in their privacy, ironically. Bertha goes and she cuddles with her daughter, she feeds her daughter and she feels that as if this bond which she shares with her daughter is something very precious. But the nanny returns and Bertha has to leave her daughter in her care and go to her living room. In her living room, she feels that same kind of stupid happiness bothering her. And then her husband calls and she responds. They talk about the evening which they have planned and the dinner party which will include Mr. and Mrs. Knight. Mr. Knight is an aspiring theatre director and his wife is interested in interior decoration. Another guest who will be coming is Mr. Eddie who is a poet and the fourth guest we get to know that is going to be somebody called Pearl Fulton. Now when Bertha's husband is talking about Pearl. He says that she is a cold person and he doesn't like her much. But somehow Bertha convinces him that no, she is a very interesting woman. And we get to understand that Bertha has very special feelings for Pearl, especially because she is such a mysterious woman. Now while waiting for her guests, Bertha notices a pear tree in her garden and it was in full bloom and she felt so happy looking at it. It is as if it was reflecting her own happiness, her own perfect life and her feeling of jubilation. Okay, But then she suddenly noticed two cats okay, just circling around the base of the tree and there was this grey cat followed by a black cat. Somehow she felt very ominous about it, that something bad might happen. She didn't feel good about that but you will see. Anyway, we move on to the evening when the guests arrive and first we have Mr. Knight and his wife. Uh, his wife is wearing a very peculiar looking dress uh, which is very funny rather and they pretend to be very non-conventional but at the end of the evening we realize that they are also very conventional upper middle class people and the whole evening is spent through discussions on art and various facets of cultural life. So on an average it is a very culturally uplifting evening and a very usual conventional uh, tea party kind of a thing that happens. 
What we notice is Bartha reacts in a very different way when Pearl comes in. Bartha feels her passion, her inner bliss rejuvenated. And it is very strange because uh, before 1960s, homosexuality was a taboo, rather an illegal thing for English people. And for Bartha to feel in a certain sexual way towards Pearl is almost forbidden. But there is no direct assertion of it. She doesn't openly admit her feeling of desire towards Pearl. But, you know, we get to know that she always has these feelings towards women, especially with strange appearance or something strange about them or unique about them. And Pearl being a very mysterious looking person, Bartha feels drawn towards her. So the evening goes on, they, they converse on different things. And eventually we see that Harry, Bartha's husband, is rather very cold towards Pearl. Okay, he offers her a cigar uh, and from his manners, Bertha feels that he is very, very, uh, very formal, very cold towards her, which Bertha doesn't like. That Bertha wants her husband to feel warm towards Pearl. Now, while this evening is going on, we see that Pearl and Bertha, they are alone standing in front of that window through which the pear tree is visible. Pearl wants to see the garden and Bertha shows her. Pearl is not very open about how she feels about things. But Bertha somehow wishes Pearl to feel the same way as she does. To have the same kind of emotion when she looks at that pear tree. And she waits for a kind of sign a kind of a signal from Pearl that they are on the same plane, that they are in empathy with each other. So this is a very pristine moment that is created between two women where the desire which Bertha feels, she is afraid to even formulate it into a phrase, into a fixed emotion. She is not ready to admit even to herself that she is having these sexual desires towards another woman. And she ironically transplants it to a socially sanctioned desire of a wife or a husband. She wants this energy inside her to be channelized through a sexual union with her husband and at the same time she is not very excited about the fact that when these guests will be gone she will be alone in the bedroom with her husband no that is not exciting her it is as if she is trying to transplant that desire for pearl through a consummation with her husband so it's very strange because she is as if she's improvising on her desire so she looks at her husband with desire in her and then the evening comes to a close. The guests, they begin to depart. Uh, first, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Knight, uh, they are going off and Pearl, she decides to go with Eddie in a cab. Now, while both of them were going towards the exit, Eddie asks Bertha for a certain book which Bertha has and she offers to give it to him. So they go to the hall while Pearl is going towards the doorway. Harry approaches Pearl and Bertha feels that Harry is trying to make up for his coldness by being very polite and well-mannered uh, towards Pearl. But when Bertha is with Eddie giving him the book, she notices something. She notices that Pearl is talking to her husband. They are embracing each other and they are planning for seeing each other the next day. And she can make out from the movements of their lips that they are very intimate with each other. This moment was a moment of extreme crisis for Bertha because it's as if her whole idea about Harry, about her happiness with him, about his loyalty, everything crashes down. The evening ends, the guests depart. And she looks out at her garden, at that pear tree. 
The pear tree is still as beautiful as before, blooming as before, but she feels empty all inside. It is as if everything remains the same, but her world is totally changed. So this is a story where this woman who cannot understand what she will do with her blissful state actually ends up losing her bliss. So it's very, very, very ironic because happiness or desire or such emotions are so unfamiliar to a woman like Bertha that when she has these moments, she can hardly hold on to them. They will eventually go away from her life. I sometimes feel it is sinful to summarize any of Catherine Mansfield's stories. Her stories are beautiful, not just because of the episodes that she mentions or the sequence of events, no. Her stories come to life through her expressions. When Bartha talks about bliss, she talks about swallowing a sun. In a summary, these expressions are lost. So it is sinful rather to summarize authors like James Joyce, authors like Catherine Mansfield. But I hope this summary will create interest in you and will help you in your understanding of the story when you will read it. I will also have sessions where we will look at the characters individually, the symbols, the themes, images, Okay, so we will have a detailed discussion on the story, but this summary will help you to remember the important points in the story, which you will need for your analytical answers. I hope you have enjoyed this class. Stay with me for my next video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. So until next time, this is Monami Mukherjee. Thank you.